Today, we begin Holy Week. In ancient times, this was known as the Great Week. The Passion narratives come to life as if enacted before our very eyes. Step by step, we follow the path Christ trod during the last days of his mortal life. Now, like the people of Jerusalem, we too joyfully acclaim Christ as our King. He enters the holy city not as a warrior king with a great army, but as a humble and gentle Messiah, humble and riding on a donkey. Zechariah 9.19 The donkey was regarded as a beast of burden and still is. Christ, as it were, does the donkey work for us. He takes upon himself the burden and guilt of our sins and carries them in his sacred passion. I think it's also worth noting that in ancient times it was customary for a king to ride on a donkey when on a mission of peace, whereas the horse carried kings into battle. Now in this sense, Christ the king will bring peace to those who make a place for him in their hearts and in their lives and follow him with humility. But peace will only be ours if, as subjects of the kingdom, we live by the truth. If you remember, Jesus said to Pilate, All who are on the side of truth, listen to my voice. The procession of palms, which is soon to follow, is not just pageantry. We follow Christ with a lively devotion. Even today the triumph of Easter is foreshadowed, the psalm or the palm being an emblem of that victory. The book of Revelation relates that the saints in heaven hold palm branches in their hands. We don't just look back then at a past event. The opening prayer of the Mass says it all. When our life on earth is over, may we follow Christ into the new and everlasting Jerusalem of heaven. The first reading in today's Mass from the book of Isaiah, written 800 years before Christ, speaks about a mysterious suffering servant whose sufferings prefigure those of Christ. The humility of Christ in accepting insult and derision is underscored in the first and second readings. He did not cover his face against insult and spittle and again he emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave the gospel this year is the story from the passion of luke it never fails to make a deep impression as we enter into the story we can imagine ourselves on mount calvary witnessing christ's terrible suffering and death for ourselves the question is if I were on Calvary that day, what effect might it have on me? What would my reaction be to what was taking place that first Good Friday? The answer is pretty straightforward. Where do I stand now? If I am stuck in the rut of sin and I'm not doing anything about it, then I will keep my distance from the cross of Jesus. It says that many people among the onlookers went home beating their breasts. Do I believe that my sins had a part to play in putting Jesus on the cross? Would I beat my breast and descend from the mountain, a rather chastened man or woman? Does the message of Calvary find a real home in my heart? Or am I just some, like some of the crowd that day, just there for the spectacle, but unmoved in any deep down sense? Or does the death of Christ out of love for humanity give meaning to my life on earth and prepare me for paradise, which is the real goal of my existence? Now, thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh, oh.